Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, unfortunately, I discovered a puncture. On the SV, got a nail in there, um, and obviously the tyre, as you can see, is flat as a pancake. So, uh, what I need to do, get that nail out and uh, have a look at fixing it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a temporary fix, uh, well, what I consider to be a temporary fix if you want to continue to use it uh, permanently until you change the tyre, that's entirely up to you, it's your bike. Um, however, I'm going to apply a temporary fix um, using a small kit which you can fit underneath your, the seat of your bike and if you ever get caught out with a flat tyre, when you're out on a tour or out for a ride anywhere, um, you can at least then affect a repair to get you home or to get you to somewhere where you can uh, get a tyre changed or, or have a professional repair coming up. Anyway guys, thanks for stopping by, let's, uh, let's dig into it. Okay, so obviously I have the luxury of being in my garage carrying out this, but um, you know, you, you could find yourself at the side of the road having to uh, to uh, get yourself out of a bit of a pickle because having a flat tire, it's not it's not like a car where you can just whip your spare out and throw it on and away you go. Um, obviously, if you can't uh, if you can't repair the tire, you need to await uh, some sort of breakdown recovery or something like that. Um, I have had a flat tire before for quite a while ago where I managed to limp home by stopping at every petrol station uh, on the way uh, just to put air in the tyre. Um, I think that was before the days where you actually had to pay for your air, so uh, yeah, that you know, goes to show how, well, how long ago that was. Anyway, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to use my um, li the little kit that I've got, which I keep under the seat of my bikes. Um, not expensive at all, I think it's about £7.50. Um, I will stick a link uh, in the description for you so you can go and have a look yourself. And then um, what I'll also do is link some co2 canisters which you can use to inflate your tire again at the side of the road uh, they're an additional cost they don't come in with a kit but again i'll link all of that in the description below so you can go and have a look additionally you will need a set of pliers obviously to remove a nail now you don't get a set of pliers in the kit so a cheap set of pliers stick them in there with it and that's everything you need everything that i need to fix this is right here right now so let's get that nail out and get it repaired. Okay, what we'll do, we'll uh, we'll bust open the kit in a minute and have a look at uh, you know what's in there. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull this nail out with me uh, with me pliers. Get in there and give it a good give it a good yank, and hopefully she'll she'll come out. She's in there well this one. I'm not actually sure if it's gone in through a hole there actually. It might She's in there well this one. And this is why you need a, a good set of pliers. You ain't getting this out, you know, by jamming your, your car keys behind it. You need to you really need to get in there and there we go oh look at that okay so yeah it's gone in i was a bit concerned that it that it was actually gone in through the, this little mark here in the in the tire and then kind of hooked itself under but it hadn't so it was in like that and that was obviously the head of the nail and it's worn flat uh, as I've been riding it. So anyway, we've got that out. So there's the hole that we need to repair um, right there. Okay, so we're finished with the pliers for the moment. What we need to do now is have a look at the kit. Now, there's quite a bit of kit in here. CO2 cartridges. Now these are a godsend um, because obviously you don't carry a, uh, uh, you know, some form of inflation kit. You can get little electronic ones, which are pretty good. Um, I think I saw somebody on the Motorevs 
uh, Facebook group talked about how they had an electronic one. You charge it up and then um, set the temp uh, set the pressure on it, put on your tyre valve, and it, it beeps at you when it's at the right pressure, which is pretty cool. And they're quite compact, so they're quite good. Another option instead of using CO2. So I'll pop them up there. This is a little foam sleeve. Now, um, I'm not sure if you're aware or if you've ever seen like a CO2 fire extinguisher being used, but they get absolutely frozen uh, on the outside. Obviously, as all the CO2 leaves, it's, it's so cold. And if you're holding on to one of these, it will stick to your fingers. So you put that on so you can handle it. If you, uh, if you try and handle it with your bare skin, you'll end up leaving your bare skin on the little, uh, on the little canister and you don't want to do that. So always put this on the canister as you use it next thing what we've got is these little rope bungs now these uh these kind of kits are nicknamed rope kits and it's basically like a bit of string effectively and it's really tacky uh, it's got like a like a tarry substance on it like a gluey tarry substance there's quite a few in there and that is what actually bungs the hole What we need in order to apply it is a couple of tools. This is the insertion tool. So that little rope will go through that eyelet there and then forced into the tire. But because obviously the tire, uh, the nail was a darn sight smaller than that, what we'll need to do is we'll need to make that hole ever so slightly bigger in order to be able to get the rope in. So that's what this one's for. It's like a little drill effectively, like a bradle. And then we've got a little valve for the CO2 cans. This particular one has a Schrader and Presta adapter. And if you can see down there, you can you see you've got both of them. Um, and then what you do is you literally screw the canister onto there and then twist to open like so. And all the CO2 will come out and go down into the uh, into the tire. The, uh, obviously we've got an obligatory um, instruction manual that tells us how to uh, how, effectively how to do it um it's written in uh, it's written in pidgin english um mainly because i think the kit actually originally came from china but obviously this pidgin english is better than my chinese so i'm not going to get too uh too upset about that and then lastly we've got a bit of glue now this is basically like tire so rubber solution like you would get for fixing your bmx tire when you were a kid um you can use it if you want to, you don't actually need to. It's it, mainly, you use it as a lubricant to, to help you get the rope in. You can if you want to, you don't actually need to. Um, it, won't, it won't change how effective the repair is in any way. There's a little tire pressure gauge, one of the ones that um, pops out like so, so you know when you've got the right pressure. And lastly, we've got a really uh, tiny little knife um, which we will use to trim off any excess once we've applied the uh, applied the patch. Right then, what we're going to do next, uh, well first actually, should I say, is, as I said, we need to make that hole slightly larger so that we can fit our rope into it. Because at the minute, we won't get the tool into uh, into that hole because it's far, far too small. So let me grab it and we'll, uh, we'll get drilling. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to take our little drill tool and we're basically going to force it into the hole where that uh, where that nail was. Now, obviously, we want to try and get it as close to the angle as we can that the nail was following, which was roughly that kind of that kind of way. So, all we do is basically screw it in like this. You'll hear the cords rubbing against it. There we go. Look, we're in. And all we need to do is open it up a bit like that, just like so. Now, we should, we should find that this will go in to the hole, just like so. There we go. As long as you can get that in there, you're laughing. So, we're now ready to actually get our rope kit and actually fit it into the hole uh, and hopefully seal up that hole. Here's our insertion tool. Let's get one of the little ropes out. And basically peel it out. They're sticky, sticky. And pop it through the eyelet on the tool and bring it down halfway, just like so. So it's like that. 
sticky fingers, as you can see, it's, it's really tacky. And obviously that is what's gonna keep it in place. So now we're at this stage, what we need to do now is push this tool into that hole. And it will take some effort because you're trying to force something that's bigger than the hole into the hole. But the idea being that it will seal the hole. Obviously, that's the idea of this kit. So let's get the tool into the hole and started just like so. And then force her through. Like that, about halfway and then pull the tool up. Now, one thing I didn't mention before is the end of the tool is actually open. Hopefully you can, you can see that. And that's how we've left it behind like so. And that is now jammed neatly in that hole. And hopefully that should be sealing it up. We shouldn't have any air able to get through that hole at all. Uh, that's the idea anyway. Okay, so now that we've got the rope in what we can do now is take our little knife and slice slice through it like that just like so and there we are now it's nice and flush with the top of the uh, top of the tire and that bit there can be discarded so I'll throw that out of the way right now, that should be sealed. That's the idea. Um, what we need to do next is using our CO2 canisters and our little adapter is get some, some of that CO2 in the tire to inflate it. Now, one of, these, one of these little canisters will probably do a, you know, your BMX or your mountain bike with one, probably. But a motorbike tires, obviously quite, quite a lot larger in volume. There's a lot, much higher volume of, um, space inside this tire than there is in a motorbike in a tube uh, in a mountain bike in a tube should i say so um in my experience four of these is normally enough to inflate a 180 tire to around about 34 or 36 psi so i'll use four and we're probably roughly there i know that the tire is probably not going to be inflated to what you know it's factory um manual stated pressure however we're talking about getting you home here we're not talking about you know going on on another ride we're, we're or we're, we're, you know we're talking about getting you to a bike shop where a proper professional repair can be made or the tires replaced so yeah so we'll put four of these in and then hopefully it should retain all the co2 inside of the tire and it won't leak out through this through this uh, repair okay so if we pop this little package open uh, Obviously, I do have the luxury of having a compressor in here, but that's not really in the spirit of this whole, you know, this whole video. What we're trying to do is show you what you can actually achieve um, at the side of the uh, at the side of the road. So, as I said before, get your little foam foam thing on the cylinder. Do not touch the metal part of the cylinder at all. Make sure that the uh, the valve is closed and. screw the cylinder onto the adapter. Right, next what we want to do is we want to find our valve, which is just here. Take the cap off, and then this is going to screw directly onto the valve. Just like so. There's a little O-ring seal in there, and it will snug up and then it'll, um, it'll make a good seal. Right, now it's on, what we need to do next is simply open this, uh, this valve. Obviously keeping your fingers clear of the metal parts. And you heard that, um, hopefully you heard that, going into the, uh, into the, uh, into the tire. It makes, it, it makes like a rush on it and you can see how white that's gone. That's because that is absolutely frozen. So do not touch it. Um, bearing in mind that you won't get your uh, skin back on your fingers for quite some time if you do. So now what we can do is remove this one 
from the adapter. You can probably see that the actual valve has also gone really, really cold as well. So again, I would leave it a little while before you go and uh, before you go and touch any of that stuff with your uh, with your fingers as well. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get another three of those into the tire, and then hopefully we should have a decent amount of pressure in this tire. Right then, so I've got four canisters in. As you can see, it just basically punctures the end. Um, I've got a brand new one here. As you can see, that one's still sealed. So yeah, they, it just basically punctures the end and obviously allows it all to flow into the tire through this valve. And this gets particularly cold as well, as you can see. And these are still cold in my hand. And I can, you know, I can brush the ice off them with my, with my finger. So that is why you need to use this when you're, uh, when you're discharging it because they absolutely will stick to your fingers. So bear that in mind. Okay, so they get all for the bin. I'll take me, uh, I'll take my little foam sleeve off and put that back in the kit. Uh, put them down there and the valve up there. Right, I've got the little, um, I've got the little tire pressure gauge out of the uh, out of the kit. Uh, I'm not sure how well calibrated this is. Um, bearing in mind it is a fairly cheap kit. However, what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly just check the pressure, and I'm hoping, yeah. So, according to this, we've got 30 psi in this tire, and it feels pretty solid. I can just about push it in with my thumb, and that's pushing really hard. So, 30 psi. There was four cans made 30 psi. If you wanted to, you could probably stick another one in, and you'd probably get it closer to probably closer to 36. But we are obviously talking about a limp home process here, so 30 will do to get you home anyway. Okay, so. Um, Within the kit, you've got enough to, there's, there's enough in there to fix probably 20 punctures. Um, all you need to do is, if you do uh, affect a repair and you use some of your canisters, you just replace them and put them back under your seat and it's good for your next ride. So, obviously, let me find me my actual fix. There it is, right there. Um, it's not going to do any harm. You probably won't even notice it when you're actually riding. But um, what I would do is I would, you know, keep an eye on your speed. Um, I wouldn't go cracking around everywhere at 80 to 100 mile an hour with um with, with that repair in there I, I would i would limit your speed until until such time as you've had a proper repair affected or you've had the tire replaced but at least you're not stuck at the side of the road now you've made it home and obviously got to the fridge and got a beer out because you're happy you're not sitting at the side of the road especially if it's raining because there's nothing worse Okay, guys. Hopefully, you uh, you enjoyed this video. You, you know you've um, learned something. Maybe uh, probably some of you out there have, uh, have had to do this before yourself uh, when you're stuck at the side of the road. Um, but yeah, if you if you haven't and you you enjoyed it, then by all means, smash that like button. Uh, leave a comment down below, and uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, as I said before, the links to all of this stuff are, I'll stick in the description so you can buy one. I've got one in, in uh, I've got a few of them actually in a couple of my bikes. Um, absolutely, you know, worth their weight. Uh, and I say weight, it doesn't actually weigh that much. So it's not, you're not even really going to notice it underneath the seat. Okay, guys, I've waffled on enough. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As I said before, smash that like button, join me on the socials, Kev Shared at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you all again for the next video. Take care. Bye bye now.